we're going to continue with something a little bit more challenging. Same idea. This example says verify the family of functions is a solution. Exactly the same idea of the problems we just saw. We're going to verify the solution. But now the solution is a family of functions. Okay, let me just read it and we'll explain as we see the details. So the differential equation y double prime minus 4y prime plus 4y equals 0. And the solution is y equals c1 e to the 2x plus c2 x e to the 2x. What makes that solution a family of functions are those constants c1 and c2. Uh, and we like to use the c because, well, they're very much like the c that we know and love from integrating. We're going to say c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants. So it turns out you can put any constants here you like, and all of those combinations of whichever constants you put in for c1 and c2, those will all pr provide you um, solutions for this differential equation. So for example, if you were to pick c1 equals 1 and c2 equals 1, then that would be a solution. But if you were to pick c2 equals 2 and c2 equals 3, well, that would be a, a, a different solution. It would still solve that differential equation. That's the idea behind the family. Uh, well, as far as how we actually go about this, um, really exactly the same idea we just gotta we just have more difficult derivatives a little bit more going on there uh, but that's our y so later we're going to plug this whole thing in for the y here uh, but first we need to find y prime and y double prime to plug in there and there and then we'll confirm or verify that this really this thing really does equal zero okay so let's start by finding y prime So let's see, if c1 is a constant, then the derivative of c1 e to the 2x, well, we just bring that 2 down, right? 2 c1 e to the 2x. Over here, well, because we have that x in that position, this is going to be a product rule. So it'll be c2 e to the 2x plus, and then the derivative of the e to the 2x, the 2 down, right? Plus 2 c2 x e to the 2x is y prime, that whole thing. We don't stop there. We also need y double prime, and it's just going to get bigger and bigger. No big deal. Derivative here again. Bring another 2 down, right? 4c1 e to the 2x. This derivative, no problem. Just a 2 drops down in front. 2c2 e to the 2x. For that last part, we've got another product rule. All right, no big deal. 2c2 e to the 2x plus, and now another 2 drops in front, 4c2 x e to the 2x. And we got y double prime. One thing you can notice, those two terms in the middle are the same. So let's go ahead and simplify that. Here it is, 4c1 e to the 2x plus 4c2 e to the 2x plus 4c2 x e to the 2x is y double prime. So things are getting a little bit longer, but certainly nothing um, we can't work with and compared to things we've done already in this class, no big deal at all, right? So we're going to take this whole thing, plug it into y double prime. We're going to take this whole thing, plug it into y prime, and we're going to take that original y and plug it in right here. And we're going to check, do we really get zero? And well, we pretty much know that we will because we're asked to verify so long as we did our derivatives correctly. Okay, so there's the second derivative, okay, minus four times the first derivative, and I ran out of space on my page, plus four times the original y, and we're saying it equals zero. Now, we haven't verified it yet. We're just plugging these things in. So I'll give you a moment uh, to write all that out, maybe hit pause. Okay, let's see. So I have the left side and the right side. Does this left side really work out to be zero? So there's a lot going on. Let's check. Um, let's look maybe at this term here, the c1 e to the 2x term. So I have a c1 e to the 2x 
here's another c1 e to the 2x and another c1 e to the 2x. Do those really all cancel out? So I have four of them, but then I'm going to subtract eight, and then I'm going to add four back. So four minus eight plus four. Yep, all of these cancel out. Excellent. Let's look at the C2 e to the 2x terms. C2 e to the 2x, C2 e to the 2x. Oh, I don't have a C2 e to the 2x here. I have C2 x e to the 2x, but that's not the same. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, I've got four of them, and then I'm going to subtract four of them, so those cancel out. Finally, I have C2 x e to the 2x, C2 x e to the 2x, C2 x. Do all those cancel out? Well, I have four of them, minus eight, plus another four. Yep, all those are going to cancel, and I think that's pretty good. We can just say zero for the left and zero on the right. Zero equals zero. It's verified. Okay. Okay. Uh, this family of solutions happen to have two arbitrary constants, but they don't have to. They could just have one. Um, actually, I can point something out here. This goes beyond just what we're studying of differential equations in this course. But notice there were two arbitrary constants, and the highest derivative was a 2. We had a second derivative, right? Second derivative goes with two arbitrary constants. Just something, to, something you might notice, and there is a connection there. Again, that is beyond the depth at which we study these. But if you study the course differential equations, um, you'll learn that you'll pick up on that pretty quick. OK. Moving on, uh, we're going to define an initial value problem. Something we want to do here in the intro as well. Uh, an initial, let me zoom in a bit. Well, that's a little written a little bit small. An initial value problem. Um, that is abbreviated IVP. It's a particular solution which satisfies an initial condition. Now that all seems very vague. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll do an example in just a moment to clear things up. Um, one thing we want to point out, what is a particular solution? A particular solution is a solution which does not contain any arbitrary constants. So this one, of course, did. So that is not particular. Uh, but those other examples we did earlier, let me just bring it back here. This was a particular solution from part A. No arbitrary constant there. And part B as well, E raised to the 3t squared, no arbitrary constant there. That's a particular solution. OK, so the goal with an IVP is to find the particular solution which satisfies an initial condition. OK, what's that all about? Well, let's get to an example. Again, they're doing the hard work for us, so it's easy to get thrown off. Aren't we supposed to be doing more than this? Like, Nope, th this is what the intro is all about. OK, here's our IVP example. The differential equation y prime plus 2xy squared equals 0 has family of solutions y equals 1 over x squared plus c. OK, let's just stop right there. So this differential equation has this family of solutions. OK, we know it's a family because there's a c. There's an arbitrary constant. 1 over x squared plus c. So the idea is you could put any constant value here you want, and that would give you another solution to this differential equation. Any value you pick would be another solution. So we think all of those together with every value of c is the family. OK, but they're telling us the solution. <laughs> because we don't know how to get those yet. All right, so then the question is, what is the particular solution that solves the IVP 
with initial condition y of 2 equals 1 third. What is the particular solution that solves the IVP with initial condition y of 2 equals 1 third? Okay, so they're telling us this fact has to be met. That condition must be uh, true for the particular solution we're after. y of 2 equals 1 third. So, well, that's an x value and a y value, right? What is the particular solution? Okay, well, remember, the particular solution does not have an arbitrary constant. So what we're going to do, we're going to plug 2 in for x, we're going to put 1 third in for the y, and we're going to figure out what c value fits. So these, this x and y go into the family, and I'm just showing you all of my work here. We're going to put in 1 third for y, we're going to put in 2 for x, and we're going to figure out what c has to go there to fit that initial condition. And it's not going to take us long, right? 1 third equals 1 over 2 squared plus c. Okay, well that's 1 over 4 plus c. We can cross multiply 4 plus c equals 3. We can subtract c equals negative 1. Okay, very nice. c equals negative 1. Now you might think, well once you find c you're done, right? No. That c itself is not the particular solution. we got to take that and put it back into the C in the family. So the particular solution here, y equals 1 over x squared minus 1. This particular solution does two things. It solves the differential equation. And it meets this condition here, that y of 2 equals 1 third. Now, don't get carried away. They're not asking us to verify this solution. I mean, it would, it would work if you wanted to verify this solution in the differential equation. You could, right? All you need is the first derivative to plug in, and then here you're squaring the y. Um, and you could verify that that really comes out to 0. They're not asking that. Just what's the particular solution? So figure out the C, and then, okay, there it is, There's there, there you go. Um, if we were in class, it would be nice to put this up in Desmos. I think I'll, I'll make a quick Desmos video at the end of this section so we can see the visuals here. Okay. We got another example coming up, going to take things in a slightly different direction. You know, 9.1 is like a hodgepodge, a little bit of different ideas. This one says, consider y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y equals 0. Find all the values of m so that y equals e to the mx is a solution. Okay, wow. So they're telling us they're telling us a solution, but they're not telling us the m. What value of m would cause this to be a solution of that differential equation? We gotta figure it out. Okay, now there's actually something to solve for here. It's not the solution, it's just like a piece of the solution, but but okay, things are getting more difficult. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna approach this in exactly the same way we've been verifying these solutions. Okay, we know the solution looks like y equals e to the mx. So e to the mx is gonna go in for y. We're also gonna find some derivatives to plug in for y prime and y double prime. And once we're able to plug all that stuff in, then we're going to see if we can figure out the m that would make that whole thing equal 0. OK, so let's jump into it. And you see some of my work. OK, let me just draw your attention here to the left. Uh, so y equals e to the mx. I'm just repeating that. So then my derivative, right, m is a constant. So y prime is m e to the mx, multiply down that m, y double prime, 
multiply an m again, m squared e to the mx. Now one thing uh, we should make really clear here, m is not an arbitrary constant. It's not like c. Um, why not? Because there, there is going to be a fixed value of m that will make that solution uh, uh, that will make the solution a solution of our differential equation. So it's not like C in the sense that it can be anything. Uh, there's only a couple numbers that's gonna that's gonna work. You know, okay. Just to make point of that. Okay, so now we're gonna take y double prime, plug it in right there. There you go. M squared e to the mx minus five times y prime. Okay, so minus five times m e to the mx plus 6 times y, plus 6 times e to the mx, and we know that this equals 0. Plug them all in. Now, we got to figure out the m that's going to cause it to be 0. How are we going to do that? Notice each of these terms has an e to the mx, so we can factor that out. e to the mx times the quantity m squared minus 5m plus 6. And all that is 0. Hey, we can factor this further. e to the mx. And this factors as m minus 2 times m minus 3. And so we got our two solutions for m right there, 2 and 3. And we got it. Now, you may be wondering, hey, what about the e to the mx? Does that provide another solution of m? No. Turns out there's no value of m to make this factor equal 0. Um, only 2, m equals 2 will do it, m equals 3 will do it. Um, this factor does not provide any other solutions. So there we go. If m is 2, then y e to the 2x would be a solution. Or if m is 3, y e to the 3x, that would be a solution. And you know we're not asked to verify those. More, we're just asked to find the m's. So there we go. Uh, that was part A. Turns out where there's a part A, there's usually a part B. Now this is kind of interesting. Um, this does not build off of part A. This is a completely separate question. Part B asks, okay, go back to that, that differential equation. Are there any constant solutions? So forget everything that we did in part A. Forget y equals e to the mx. Just looking here. Are there any constant solutions where y equals a constant? And now this, you know, this is a lot better to do when you're in a classroom and you can say, hey, any, you know, y equals, y equals, are there any, oh, it's off the page. Are there any constant solutions? And sometimes it's pretty common that somebody will pick up on the one constant solution that there is, and that is y equals zero. Hey, if y equals zero, wouldn't that solve this? Well, because y equals zero, and then y prime would be zero, and y double prime would be zero, and you'd have zero minus zero plus zero would give you zero. Yes, y equals zero is a solution to that as well. So we found, you know, it's like based on this, we realized two solutions, right? Y equals e to the 2x and y equals e to the 3x. But it turns out y equals 0 is also a solution there. And that's, that's kind of that's interesting to point out. Okay, we're going to stop this video here. Um, we're going to do a little bit more with this in the next video.